right, come on. Stir your stumps. The day's half gone. What do you mean, half over? Well, it ain't even started yet. Oh, gone it, Ronnie. You're worse than a bunch of mule-headed cows in a cactus second. Next time, Jesus, remind me to choose better company, will you? Bueno. Look, you can't dream your way to horsehead crossing. Well, the way I feel, sure wouldn't mind. I bet you we come 50, 60 miles yesterday just poking along. I swore up and down I was never going to make another one of these knuckle-headed drives anyway. That's right. You just didn't have anything else to do, that's all. Come on, let's go. Well, let me finish my coffee. Sometimes you ain't got no human consideration. Must be the Salida del Sol. Yeah, it sure is pretty. There ain't nothing pretty about this part of West Texas. Oh, Jim, you just don't have any soul. See how beautiful that sunrise is? Si, sí, es hermoso, bello. All that means it's getting higher. It's just going to be hot and more miserable, that's all. Uh, it's going to be a lucky day. Something real good's going to happen today. Yeah, the only luck I'd have is turn this horse around, hit from home, give this turn drive the go by. Maybe this driver will be lucky and you'll make your fortune. Fortune? $30 a month and grub? Big bust at the end and maybe enough boot leather to get home on. That's a fortune, all right. Maybe this one will be different. Well, we ain't going to be on this one if we don't get the horse head. Let's get crack one. Cattle drives. <laughs> Look at them stairs. How they get so doggone fat on this kind of feed, though? Oh, it is surprising sometimes what will fatten them. This browser around here looks like that Father South down in Mexico. Very rich. They're sure good-looking cattle. Hey, just think what they'd bring up north, huh? Yeah, probably 30, 35 ahead. Yeah, or more. Hey, this is going to be a lucky day. What do you mean? Our fortune? There it is, right out there. Where? The beef, right there. Senor, you don't mean... No, hold on. You don't think we're going to do anything like... I'm not talking about stealing them. Well, what are you talking about? Buying them, maybe? Us? Yeah, why not? What's to say we can't take a few steers along with us? Mr. Paper wouldn't mind. Well, I, I don't know. You can pick them up out here for probably $10, $12 a head. This ranch is going to sell them to some herd going by anyway. It might as well be us. Yeah, that uh, that'd be about... Uh, maybe 20 maybe more a head. How many do you think we could buy? Well, that depends on how much money we have. I've got a, around $78 I've been saving. Hold on. I ain't got more than about 48 65 I was saving to buy a saddle at the Pecos. Well, say we could pick up 15 or so. That could give us around $300 at the end of the drive. How about it? Be a mighty lean trip to payday. What the heck, we probably won't pass any towns anyway. I guess I can ride the old saddle. Well, I always did want to be a cattle baron. Might as well start now. Partners. I got a feeling it ain't going to work. Hey, there's some kid putting out a salt lick. Yeah, let's find out about it. Hey! Shut your weight! too easy on the eye, Quince, but I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> well, I admit, we might look grubbier than I thought, but uh, we might look like somebody he don't want to see, too, you know? Uh, well, it don't matter. Ranch House is probably off in that direction. We'll find it. Hey, 
Hey, what's the matter with you? Who are you shooting at? You just stay away from here, that's all. Just keep moving. Look, we want to talk to you. We got nothing here you want, so just move on. Yeah, you got some cattle. We'd like to buy some. Yeah, the way you've been buying up and down the river, I suppose. Well, I'm warning you. I'll put a bullet through the first one who shows me enough skin. Look, mister, I don't know who you think we are, but you're wrong. We ain't been doing anything up and down the river. We're headed west to Horsehead Crossing to meet our boss with a herd. We saw some of your stock, thought we'd like to buy some, maybe. You say you got a herd boss at Horsehead. What's his name? Faber. Faber? That was Hank's herd boss. You know a man named Calvin? The only one I know is uh, Hank Calvin rode with us a few seasons back. Keep the carbine on him, Johnny. You watch around back just in case. All right, just one of you. Come on in. Peace. You look a little bit like Hank. I ought to. I'm his brother. You must have heard him mention Rowdy Yates, ramrod of the outfit, didn't you? Sure, Pa, that's Rowdy. Now you say you are. How can I be sure? Being awful wary, ain't you, mister? I realize it's a lonely place out here, but uh, what are you scared of? Bandits. They've been spooking the whole Pecos Valley. It has spread up the line only yesterday. We ain't no bandits. We're just here on business, that's all. You say you want to buy cattle? How many? Well, that sort of depends on you. I'm willing to pay the going price in San Antonio. That's $10 a head. Oh, well, like 11 or 12 last year. Yeah, well, this ain't last year. There's more cattle being offered. Besides, they ought to be cheaper out here. There's less of a market for them. Well, that's prime beef. Yeah, I know it. That's why I'm offering $10, same as San Antonio. Yeah, I can show you some cash. All right. Our pick of the herd. All steers, no stock. Great. I can uh, take 18 of them. I got $180. You can give me a bill of sale, can't you? Could you kind of put that away? Or you got the kid in the window covering me with a carbine. Come on in, I'll get your bill of sale. Howdy. Howdy, ma'am. Real nice place you have here. Why, thank you. You gone on another cattle drive? All the way to Wyoming? Yeah, maybe even further. We're not quite sure yet. I dreamed of doing that all my life. Well, maybe you will someday. I was just about your age when I went on my first one. Johnny, you better go out and take care of that team instead of dreaming about cattle drives. All right, Pa. Ain't nothing to be done about it. Some kind of sickness he had when he was little. It's, uh, it's almost noontime, and there's plenty for all. Maybe you'd favor us with staying? Oh, I better not, man. We better be moving on. Oh. Well, you, you gotta eat. Then we can go cut out the cattle. All right. Thank you very much. Here, I'll give you some help. I don't need no help. Them all right, Mr. Yates. If you want to come along? You're welcome. Stepped in a hole, broke his leg. 
Did your pa fix this? I did. I set the bone and put on the splint and rigged up this sling to keep him off in it. He'll be all well in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Anybody else would have shot him. No sense doing that. He's a good colt. Yeah, maybe so. Never be able to work a rig like this out on the trail, though. No. I suppose not. Cat got a squirrel. Tore him up pretty bad, but I managed to save him. Got a regular little hospital there, haven't you? Sometimes I got more than this. I'm gonna do all this anyway. Out of books, mostly. See, I read a lot. Pa gets me books sent out from San Antonio, New Orleans, sometimes even New York. I like things about doctrine, especially. Yeah, well, maybe you ought to think about going to school, becoming a doctor. Not me. I'm gonna be exactly like you, a drover. I'm going on a cattle drive the first chance I get. Look, John, you don't even know what a cattle drive's like. Sometimes you go 60, 70 hours without a hot meal. You're always going over mountains or across deserts or through flooded rivers. Mud so deep you could lose the whole state plains of. Well, most drovers are either half starved, half baked, or half drowned. You take this place here. Any one of them would walk halfway across Texas barefoot just to have what you've got. Mr. Yates, when I got sick and I found out I was like this, at first I got plenty scared. Then I found out that there isn't anything I can't do, as long as I don't give up. Oh, Mr. Yates, I haven't given up yet. I'm still gonna be a drover. Well, you make me believe you. Good luck. <laughs> Mr. Yates. Oh, it's got room for more meat. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> it's a pleasure to see men eat your cooking. Yeah. Mr. Yates, if you're gathering your herd at Horsehead Crossing, maybe you ain't got a full crew hired yet? No, I think Mr. Faber's probably already taken care of that. Yep, yeah, but there'd be a chance he might hire another man? Johnny. Listen, we've talked this all over before. I know we have, Pa. And I told you before, I ain't giving up. I'm gonna do just like anybody else would do. But, Johnny, with you, it's different. No, it ain't no different. I ain't different, and I won't be different. Now, I'll show you. Mr. Yates, I'm asking you, will you take me along? Oh, kid, I don't, uh... I don't have any authority. I don't do the hiring. You don't think I can do it? No. No, I don't. You see, to be a drover, you gotta be tough. You gotta be able to take a lot. It's not any job for a... For a cripple? Go ahead and say it. I've heard of drovers with, with, one, with one arm or one leg or... That's right. But they were older men, men who've been drovers all their lives. They didn't know anything else. You, it's different, kid. You've got, you've got your whole life ahead of you. You've got things to do, much better things. Much better things than pushing around cattle. It doesn't make any sense. This is what I've been trying to tell him, but he just won't listen. Mr. Yates, I'm asking you one more time. Will you take me along or not? No. Leave him be, Ma. I'm sorry, ma'am. No, Mr. Yates, you were right. You had to tell him. It's... it's a hard thing to accept, something like that. that does it, Mr. Calvin. It's been a real pleasure. Rowdy, give my best to Mr. Faber. All right. Thanks very much.
That's a six times seven. Uh, 42. Uh, what are you doing? Never mind what I'm doing. Counting your profits already? Can a man do a little figure? Look, we got $35 ahead for him. We gotta get those steers there first. That's true. I better take a turn around, eh? What's the matter? Don't you think they're all right? I, I just wanted to be sure. You know, maybe he's right. They belong to us now. Maybe we better put a regular night guard on them. They're all right. Leave them alone. All better down, you can see them from here, even count them. In fact, I just did. Yeah, how many? About 20. Same as when we got here. They're all right out there. You know, pretty nice that old boy to give us those two extra ones. That brought it down to $9 a head. Must have been what you told his boy. Sort of help the old man out somehow. Sad thing, not to be able to do the thing you want to do. Yeah, well, it may be sad for a while, but that kid will be all right. He's got a lot more to offer than batting around a bunch of steers. What's that? Something spooked the cattle. They're standing up. Coming in. Can't be Comanches. Too much noise. Those banditos, maybe. What are you doing here? Going to Horsehead Crossing with you? I told you, I don't give up. You can just turn around and head right back home, kid. Uh-uh. Look, I ain't asking you, I'm telling you. I'm sending you back out of here. How you figuring on doing that? You're gonna have to tie me up and take me yourself. But your mother, she will be worried, no? And your father? No, I didn't just run away from home. We had it all out before I left. As a matter of fact, Pa gave me this note for you. Mr. Yates, he's got to get this out of his system sooner or later. So I'd rather he'd go now with you than get mixed up maybe with the wrong bunch another time. I know it's a big thing to ask you to do, but look out for him and help him. We'll thank you for it. Harvey Calvin. Look, I told him and I told you and I meant it. I ain't got time to play nursemaid and no greenhorns. I ain't no greenhorn. I'll do my share. Oh, kid, I, I know how much this means to you and I wish I could help you out, but I can't. Oh, come morning, I'm gonna take you back home. Mr. Yates. Sorry, Johnny. Hey, where do you go? Leave him alone. Rowdy, you were pretty rough on him. Jim, there's a time in every man's life when he's gotta be left alone. It's part of growing up. Be back. to the camp of Antonio Chavez. Who are you? My name is Johnny Calvin. Tengan cuidado. And you travel alone? Of course not. There's others back there, a lot of them. Y todos son niños también. No, no niños, drovers, good fighters. So you better mind your manners. See? We will uh, mind our manners. Mr. Chavez, I haven't got anything for you to rob. Rob? What is this? I know who you are. You're the bandits that have been scaring people up and down the valley. Bandits? Antonio Chavez and his compadres? 
We are peaceful travelers just like you. Sit down, have some coffee. What is one so young doing alone on the trail? I'm going to Horsehead Crossing to become a drover. Ride with the herd. You? Un niño with a crooked leg? I can make it all right, no matter what anyone says. So you quarreled with your drovers and ran away, or perhaps they sent you away, huh? They wouldn't even take me in. You see, I followed them after they stopped at our ranch to buy their cattle. Ah, they bought all your papa's cattle. 2,000 head? Just 20 bees. That's all they could afford. Just a few poor drovers. Only three. And you uh, followed them far? No, not far. Then this ranch of your papa's is close by. Why do you want to know? No matter. These drovers will know where it is, eh? Well, perhaps we'll pay them a visit later tonight. Why? A little matter of business, Chico. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Uh, I thought I heard a sound. I thought I'd ride out and look around. What do you mean, look around? Cattle are all right. They're real peaceful. Unless maybe your conscience is bothering you. Where are you going? Why, a little coffee, senor. Sleep does not come easy this night. Well, that's because we haven't heard your usual snoring, thrashing around like a jackass with a colic. You mean something by that? Well, I hadn't really thought about it. But there might be a little bit of resemblance at that. Uh, well, I still think the kid will come back. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? It's a horse, not ours. Jim Jesus! Johnny, amigo? Boy, you out there? Come on in, kid. Come here. Stand where you are, hombres. Pedro, las armas. I would have sworn that was Johnny's voice. What about the kid out there? All in good time, senor. You, um, have money, no? No, we don't have more than a few dollars between us. Nothing of value. Senor? Es verdad. Compramos los novios. Y tomo todo. Y tú, compadre? ¿Qué andas con ellos? I'm not your compadre. These are my friends. This is all you have for me, the cattle, eh? Bueno. Pedro! Manuel! Los novios! You're just not going to leave us out here afoot in the middle of nowhere, are you? It's too bad, senor. But I need fresh horses, and yours are too good to pass by. At least leave us our guns so we can have some way to hunt up grub. The guns you may keep. And to show you how just a man is Antonio Chavez, you're the Nero also. What about the boy? Ah, I see. The boy. Carlos! You see, senores, El Nino is my guest. I'm sorry, Rowdy. I didn't mean to tell him about you. Honest. And I didn't want to call. What are you going to do with him, Chavez? I told you, he's my guest. For the time. How long? 
For as long as it takes you to reach his papa and raise money. Money? How much? Oh, let us say $2,000. His pa don't have that kind of money, Chavez. But he has many cattle. He can raise the money. Yeah, and that would take time also. But not too much, eh? For Antonio Chavez cannot wait in any one place too long. In two days, you, one of you, will bring the money to Angel's Peak. A half a day's ride to the south. No tricks. The boy might not return. Comprende? Chavez, you touch one hair on that kid's head. I told you. He's my guest. Amigos. They're gone. Our cattle, horses, everything. Well, I knew it wouldn't work. And out. Johnny, what are we going to do? How will you get to his father? Oh, we're not going to take Calvin over a week to raise that kind of money. Oh, it's up to us to get him back. But how? We have no horses. That was a ranch about a mile or so back. We can go back there and maybe borrow some. Look, this was my fault and I know it. You don't have to hang around. You don't have to help out. What are we waiting for? Let's get going. How goes it? Like any shoulder with a bullet in it, estupido. One shot in one hundred, and that herder of cattle had to make it good. The one who wanted to be a drover, eh? I can make it. The big, tough vaquero. Well, show me. Make me believe it. There. There is a stray. Get it! Is it now? It's still the same. I cannot move my arm. That bullet must have broken your shoulder bone. There's a pueblo up the river. There might be a medico there. I cannot ride. I will go and bring back whatever I can. You will all go. You and Carlos and Manuel. And leave you here alone with the boy? The boy has no threat. The pueblo might be if they're watching for us. Fight if you have to, but bring back a medico. Comprende? Está bien. Bueno. Vamos, señor. Well, there goes three of them. Hey, I recognize the one Chavez called Carlos. 
Looks like maybe they're headed towards that town that that rancher talked about. Yeah, but the cattle trail goes on there right away. That means Chavez must be alone in their camp. Maybe not far ahead. And Johnny? And Johnny. Come on. Chico, a little more wood for the fire. Don't worry, your papa will pay for you. It ain't that. I ain't scared of no banditos. No nothing you can do to me. Wes, what is it? I know now. Rowdy was right. I can't do it. I can't ever be a drover. Because someone laughed at you? Because of what happened today? Have you no more coraje than that? I couldn't do any of it. Nobody can the first time, Chico. You, you think maybe I could learn? Learn? Why not? You watch, you listen, and presto, you learn. I will not lie to you, Chico. A crippled leg is bad. For you, everything will be much harder. And you will probably never be very good, never the best. Just one to get by. One to hire when maybe there was no one else better. You want that kind of life? Well, maybe it wouldn't have to be like that. It would have to be. I tell you that. I know. How could you know? You don't have a twisted leg. You don't have to go through life with a... a deadness where there should be a bone. Chico, a man can be a cojo, a cripple, with bones of iron and a heart of granite. A long time ago, the name of Chavez was a proud name in this land. A name known and respected among the greatest Hidalgos of Mexico. It was a farm, and land as far as the eye could see. And much felicidad, much happiness. Then the trouble came. First with the Tejanos, then with her brothers in the north. When the war started, the Chavez banner rode in the front rank where it belonged. there was only one Chavez left. Then only a Nino like yourself. I went home and found only ashes and dead memories and land that now had gringo patrones. I had two straight legs and my arms were strong, Chico. But I became a cripple. In here, where no eyes can see, where no sunlight can reach. Where there is no hope. Uh, Mr. Chavez. That is why I know. Every man is a cripple in some way, but not all men let this rule their lives. Let your twisted leg be your servant, not your master. Chavez, do you still hate the people that took your home? What difference does that make now? I don't know. But I can't hate the thing that did this to my leg, the sickness that did this. I guess hate would only make things worse. Kettle. Yeah, their camp must be down among them rocks. See? Well, let's take them. Now, wait a minute. The kid's down there. He's liable to get hit. Now, we'll get down there nice and close and cut Johnny out. Settle with Chavez.
Hey, he spotted this too soon. Now he's really got us stranded out here. Yeah, there's too much open ground to rush him. He'd nail us for sure. There is no way to go around. I think one of us can make it back up the hill. I'll give it a try. Yeah, but it's close enough. There's nothing we can do now except wait for the sun to go down. No, we can't be waiting. Look, we open fire now, we'll probably hit the kid for sure. Well, maybe you're right. down before his friends get back. Maybe we ought to chance it. No, not with a kid in there. We better wait a while. They forced him to call once before. Yeah. Come on, it's all right! nickel for him, though. <clears throat> Bullet's still in there, and looks like the bone's broke. Well, I have to take the bullet out and cauterize that wound. What about his three plane mates? Keep an eye out for them. Hey, Seuss, give me a knife. John, go get some water for me, will you? Set the bone. You can do that, Johnny. Me? That's right. You did it for the cold. It's the same thing. Yeah, but listen. You said you wouldn't give up on anything. Go ahead. Them up tight so it'll last a week or so. He looks better, huh? Well, at least he'll be all right till his men get back. Rowdy, maybe somebody ought to stay with him. I mean, suppose they don't get back. Suppose something happened. Well, that ain't likely, Johnny. Just the same, it might be. And, and he's helpless. But what about the herd and Horsehead Crossing? You know, the first thing a drover's got to learn is that beef on the hoof don't wait for no man. Maybe I learned something else today. About myself. Like what? 
Like what I can do and what I can't do. Like maybe having a bum leg uh, don't bother a man who works with his head in his hands, huh? That's right, amigo. Each man finds the thing he can do best. If he looks hard enough. Senor Ali, look. Hey, Sus Quint. Johnny, you sit down next to him. Make it look real natural. Antonio, we can empty handed. There's no money going to Pueblo. Hold it right there. Don't do it. Jesus, take your guns. Antonio, you let them do this? Better to say I underestimated Chico here. Jim, why don't you tie him up? Hmm? All right, let's go. Come on. Come on. It would seem the pages have been turned back, senor. Only this time, I don't know how the story will end. Well, I guess that depends on Johnny here. On me? I can't leave you here. Nor should you. Chico, your place is where there is a future, not a past. Yep. But your shoulder? Oh, my shoulder is fine. How could it be otherwise with such good medicos? Well, it shouldn't take your men more than a few hours to work their way loose, and they can pick up where we left off. Buena suerte, Chico. I think you'll find the thing you can do. I think so too, Mr. Chavez. Thanks to you. For nada. Perhaps I too have learned something, eh? Adios, compadre. Rowdy, you're not taking their horses, are you? Yeah, I'm afraid so, Johnny. I'm just gonna take them down the round the ridge away. A little walking, and you'll have them back. And our guns? I'm afraid I'm gonna have to hang on to those, Chavez. That's sort of a little protection for me. <laughs> An excellent policy. For a herder of cattle, you learn quickly. So long, Mr. Chavez. Adios, Chico. Senor Fever has lost a good hunt. Maybe so. Bum leg and all. He's a pretty good kid. Senor Roddy, you remember what you said about the sunrise the day before we met him? You said it was going to be a lucky day. Well, I think it was. Yeah, I think we all learned something. Well, look, we better start for a horse head crossing. You figure Mr. Fever will wait for us? Well, if he isn't, we'll catch up to him. Somehow it doesn't seem quite as important as it did. Yeah, but don't forget, we own us a herd now. Yeah, that's true. Very true. Ooh, what are you two doing sitting there, just taking root? Come on, head them up and move them out. some grays in the morning. I should be glad when we hit some timber country. You waiting to climb a tree? And now. Cheyenne, I only counted two. You see any more? Oh, and that's plenty. I guess they're just looking us over. No, it ain't us they're looking over. I know I've been in the sun too long. That's a burying wing.
tracks around, none of the moccasins. I'll go around the other side and look. Mm. Maybe whoever it was took off her helmet. Huh? Well, we shot off. I'm gonna backtrack and find out. Mm. Don't shoot, Jens. Don't, don't shoot. I give up. What is it? Too large to be a rock lizard. Now, now, wait, wait, wait a minute, Jens. Now, 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 let's just talk this thing over. I can explain everything. It's all a mistake, you see. I've got a twin brother is, who's... Is there something wrong with him? Well, no, no, I'm... Uh, 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 you're not a posse? Posse? What are you talking about? You expecting one? What, but, but no, I, no, I wasn't expecting... No, you see, sir, uh, what I... You're uh, not outlaws. Well, Drover's pushing the herd up from Texas. And you better make some sense, mister, if you want us to give you some help. Drovers! Well, 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 this is a real pleasure, sir. I am always delighted to meet Drovers, sir. Men tried and true, salt of the earth, Galahads of the saddle. Pomeroy K. Talibur, sir, at your service. Gil Favor, this is Rowdy Yates. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Mr. Yates, a pleasure indeed, sir. Another gallant knight of the open plains. Uh, Mr. Tolliver. Uh, just call me Poke Jen, Slow Poke Tolliver, owner and manager of the Bideway Funeral Service. Fanciest burying rig this side of St. Louis. You see, gents, I was just taking a shortcut to uh, uh, California when, unfortunately, as you can see, I had a slight accident. Well, this is the wrong place to have an accident out here in Cheyenne country. Indians? Oh, why, some of my best customers are Indians, sir. Bury them all the time. The town variety, of course. Yeah, well, you'll love to find business a little slow out here. Ah, yes, yes, of course, indeed. But we do have a treaty, you know. You have one signed personal with those two that were watching you up there? What, watching me? Where? Where? What two? Uh, uh, wait a minute, gents. Now, we've got to stick together through this, you know. Bindle's chewed up, a couple threads torn, but it looks fixable. Any tools? Uh... Uh, tools? Yeah, for fixing the spindle, that usually helps. Uh, never mind, Roddy. Our wagon seal will be here soon enough. Uh, 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 what about the Indians? Oh, if they'd been more than curious, you'd have known about it. Uh, I, but, uh, sir, they, they, they might come back. Uh, all right. You, you can ride along with us to Rock City as soon as your wagon's fixed. Uh, uh, but in the meantime, sir... Now, relax, Mr. Tolliver. Nothing we can do until the wagons get here anyway. Well, I know, but... Uh, the, the, all right, all right. Um, if it'll make you feel better, Rowdy here will be glad to stay with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I am deeply in your debt, sir. A good man there. Stout-hearted. Not many stout heart these days. Just last week, I had a customer... Uh, Matter of fact, he was about your size. This... Excuse me, will you? you? Sure you want me to stay here? Oh, well, if those Indians come back, you can crawl in that hearse there. You'll be real safe. Yeah, well, I ain't worried about the Cheyennes exactly. I'm a burying man here. <laughs> Much cooler down here in the shade. Or uh, should I say, here in the shadow of death. <laughs> uh, tell me, did you ever hear the one about the traveling undertaker who came to this farmhouse late one stormy night? Well, seems he had a customer all boxed up snug in the back when his wagon broke down. Well, uh, <laughs> naturally, he couldn't leave him out in the rain. Naturally. You jelly backs, put some gristle into it. Now, come on, higher. I can't put this thing on sideways. No, easy, easy, gents, easy. Uh, I'm carrying valuable equipment in there, gents. We uh, can't bury him without equipment, can we? <laughs> now, come on, get it up there. A little more, a little more. There it is. Right there. Hang on. You take a look at the size of that lock. Who in the world would want to get in that little black box anyway? Padre mia. Maybe it is something that wants to bust out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. Let it out. 
Well, well, well. Just look at that. Not even a scratch. <laughs> well, we sure put it back in fine style, didn't we? Yeah, we sure did, didn't we? Uh, wait a minute, gents. Uh, gents, gents, wait just a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I might have been stranded out here till kingdom come. Hard work deserves a reward, and Pomeroy K. Tolliver pays his debts. Oh, we couldn't take no money for fixing the wagon. Oh, come, come, Mr. Yates, I insist. Call it a gift of gratitude from a weary traveler. Oh, well, Mr. Faber wouldn't want us taking any gratitude from strangers. Besides, uh, we was glad to do it. Yeah, the, the, the fellas were just gonna kind of sit around. They had nothing to do anyway. Just maybe play cards or something like that. Playing cards? Uh, you mean uh, poker? Yeah, oh yeah, poker, other games. Well, now, uh, since you gents won't let me pay for your help, the least I could do is put a little uh, fresh money into circulation. A kind of a gesture of friendship, so to speak. Well, I'm not sure it ain't up to me. I ain't sure the boys had in mind that they were gonna even get a game together tonight. Do you have anything like that on your mind for this evening, Wish? Well, I don't suppose it hurt any. What do you think, Jim? Oh, yeah, I think we should be sociable. What do you think, Douglas? I never was one to turn down a friendly get-together. Well, of course, if you gents are too tired, we could, uh... uh mushy? Yes, sir. Mr. Tolliver wants to join us in a little recreation. See if you can find that old deck cards we use for, uh, fortune-telling and the like. Yes, sir. You want me to get that new deck you swiped in Abilene? Oh, you smart Alec, get going. I had to get a couple of the boys out of trouble in a saloon one night, and one of them had passed out with a brand-new deck clutched in his hand. Uh, I never play much myself. I know what you mean. <laughs> well, should we find a nice level spot? This too? Delightful. Excuse me. Mushy! Yes, sir. What's going on? Come here. You know that saddle we got our eye on in Denver, don't you? Yeah. Well, get your savings out, because we're going to pluck us a chicken. Got room for one more? Uh. You just made it. Thanks, Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver, oh, come, come, come. We don't stand on formalities out here, do we, gents? <laughs> you just call me Poke, and I'll just call you nine times out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Well, uh, while we're getting the cards warmed up, tell me, did you gents ever hear the one about the undertaker who struck gold in a cemetery? Well, seems that he was out digging one day and he came across these nuggets, a whole hat full of them. Well, of course, right away he staked out a claim, got everybody all excited. <laughs> that is, until some uh, dentist got a look at those uh, nuggets. <laughs> Sorry, folk. Ladies full, with the four, that is. Uh, excuse me, but uh, what did you say the name of this game was? Well, Dead Man's Blood. They play it all over Texas. You see, fours are wild, but only if you have a pair of trays for openers. <laughs> Sorry, Pope. Three lucky tens. Excuse me, but... Walk at revenge, remember? Sevens are wild, and you got a one-eyed jack. Learn it in Kansas. Oh, yeah. Kings. Three of them. Well, uh, excuse me, but no, no, we both have kings, but I've got a ten, and you've got a five. Do you remember fives are wild? Oh, the black five. Oh, it's very simple. I, I... <clears throat> well, gentlemen, the uh, well seems to have temporarily run dry. <laughs> uh, 
If uh, you gents will excuse me for just a minute. Uh, keep them hot, gents. I'll be right back with Lady Luck. <laughs> Lord loves a cheerful loser. Lord loves a cheerful giver, you mean. It's all the same in his case, ain't it? You know, he's the richest burying man I ever did see. You'd think he had that black box full of money. With us. Yeah, then all the way back south to Mexico with me. and 12 for me. <sighs> Fancy Dan Undertaker. Slick talking himself into a private game just like he was a member of the family. Grinning all the time just like he was a little cat with his whiskers in the cream. Oh, Mr. Wishbone. I was looking at this catalog from Denver. Quince Scarlet said he almost won enough money last night to buy his sale. Want to see it? No, I don't want to see it. I thought maybe you might want to pick something out for yourself. How much did you win? Well, it's none of your business. Besides, I got better things to do than sit around all night playing poker. Now, get back over to that wagon and finish loading it. But I already loaded it. Well, unload it and load it again. Look at him. Polishing that thing like he was going to a parade or something. Yeah, that was funny. Remember when I laid out that Kentucky flush over the top of his two beer? I swear I thought he was going to turn purple and flop over in a dead paint. That's pretty funny, all right. Of course, I can't say too much for them jokes of his. Always talking about cemeteries and funerals. Well, that don't bother me none. He could flap my ears right off the seams as long as he kept sugar in the pot. Got me twenty dollars closer to that new saddle. Yeah, I hope we have time enough to set up another game for you every time. Gentlemen having trouble cooling your coffee? No, sir. Good morning. All right, let's move out. <clears throat> ah, Mr. Favor, good morning, sir. What's left of it? Just a few quick touches before the day's journey. Cleanliness, sir, is next to godliness, you know. Yeah. We should reach the cutoff to Rock City this afternoon. That is, of course, provided we get started sometime today. Are you going with us? Why, yes, indeed, sir, right away. In fact, sir, I am with you shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> right away, sir, right away. Good game last night. Well, not from what Wishbone said. Well, he's a little sour. He's the only one who lost. Besides the little Berrien man, he lost real good. Of course, Quince and Scarlet, they took most. Hey.
Sands Company. Hello. We were taking a shortcut over that hill and drove right up on a pack of Cheyennes. They were almost as surprised to see us as we were. Did you see them? Six of them. You see more? Well, I didn't take any extra time to count them. Lucky for us, we saw your herd. Uh, you the owner? Trail boss. Gil Favor. How do you do? My name's Stryker. Cole Stryker. And this is uh, Miss Georgia. Ma'am? Uh, Roddy Yates. Pleasure. We were on our way to Rock City. I'm in the banking business, and I was just going over there to check on some investments. Uh, Miss George is a school teacher. She's considering a job in Rock City. Oh, I didn't even know they had a schoolhouse over there. You usual cut across Indian country when you take your business trips, Mr. Stryker? No, not, not usually. I was trying to save some time, but uh, looks like I made a mistake. I, I wonder if you'd mind letting us uh, ride along with you until we get a little closer to town. We travel slow. You wouldn't save any time. Well, even if we don't, I'm sure Miss George would feel a lot better with a few more men around. Now, don't you be silly, Cole. You know a young girl is never safe around such handsome men. Yeah. Well, my men got 3,000 cows to keep them busy. You go along with us, you'll have to stick close, watch out for yourselves. Of course. Whatever you say, Mr. Favor. They can ride in the back there with Tolliver. Tolliver? He owns that burying wagon there. You'll ride with him to Rock City. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Mr. Favor. <laughs> now, with just a little more effort, those Cheyennes could have scared us up a whole wagon train. Yeah, well, at least they're sending us more interest in wagons. Oh, sure. Say goodbye, folks. <laughs> if you don't look a sight. <laughs> well, I had you fooled for a minute, though, that you never knew how fancy I could look all dude up, did you? You look like you're primed for a funeral. Your funeral. All right, now, 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 wait a minute. Now, let's all just talk this over. Sure, folks, sure. That's just what we're going to do. Talk. Right after everybody leaves. Come think about it, Cole. We did hear something about a fancy little undertaker playing it big in every saloon between here and St. Louis, didn't we? We sure did. Just like he was painting the trail for us. Listen, as a matter of fact, I was going to head back to St. Louis when I broke a wheel. You see, I've been working on this new deal. Well, you've been working, that's for sure. All dressed up in them funeral duds and squirming like a trap-sprung rat. Oh, Georgia, honey, after all we've meant to each other. I got a short memory. But not me, Tolliver. There's some things I never forget. You ran out on a deal, and with my plates. Listen, that is what I have been trying to explain to you, Striker. I got a whole new setup. It's perfect. The press is inside the hearse, you see? We can print them and keep right on moving. It's easy. Look, we can go back to St. Louis, and before you know it... No deal, little man. The plates are going back, but not you. Now get them. Now get him. Just get him, that's all. Breaker! Tolliver! You better play it good. You call this sticking close? Well, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. We, we were just getting acquainted with your other guest. Weren't we, Mr. Tolliver? Mr. Tolliver is such a fascinating man that we just completely forgot about keeping up, Mr. Favor. 
Giants ain't too particular about stragglers. Make up your mind. You stay in with the herder, ain't you? Absolutely, Mr. Favor. Absolutely. I'm a firm believer in the old rules. Uh, together we stand, divided we don't. Uh, you won't have to worry about Pomeroy K. Tolliver anymore, sir. Uh, no, sir, I am a joiner, not a follower. <laughs> right away, sir. Right away. <laughs> Now what? Well, now we do exactly what Mr. Favor wants us to do. Stay close. Folks not going anywhere without us. One. Something spooked your team, Mr. Tolliver? I guess you're mighty glad we happened to see you, Mr. Tolliver. Well, you might have wound up 20 miles away. 20 miles. Oh, now, don't you worry, Mr. Tolliver. We'll keep a close watch on you from now on. Ah, uh, you bet. Now, you just sit back there and rest. We're going to lead you back to the herd. Uh, thank, uh, thank you. Thank you. Just fine, thank you. It certainly was a terrible scare with Mr. Tolliver and all, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess he ain't too much at skinning a team. Probably don't see too much excitement being a school teacher, do you? Teaching school isn't supposed to be exciting. Well, I guess you're right. Uh, do you teach anything special? I mean, subject like? Most everything. Wouldn't you say that's what a school teacher's supposed to do, Mr. Yates? I guess that depends on the teacher. I'd give it a lot more thought if I had a teacher like you. You're a little old for lessons, aren't you, Mr. Yates? 
Oh, no, never too old to brush up a bit. I was kind of thinking, um, on my way back, maybe I'd swing by Rock City. My arithmetic's getting a little rusty. You just do that. I'll make sure you get a front row seat. I may even let you erase the blackboard. Ooh. Yeah. I'll hold you to that, teacher. Georgia! Back here. Georgia. Georgia. Back here. something to say, you better say it fast. Don't let Stryker hear you. Why not? You're not going anywhere. No, I could, with your help. My help? Honey, for you would be like rolling off a rock. Now, a couple of these and Stryker's coffee, and we could be long gone before he even knows. I gotta hand it to you, Poke. You got imagination. But this time it ran out of ammunition. Georgia, I've got it all worked out. Now, once we head to California, we set up a new front, just the two of us. 50-50 split right down the middle. Mm-hmm. Just like in St. Louis. Oh, now that, that was a minor miscalculation. Minor? Selling shares to a gold mine right smack in the middle of the Mississippi River? I, I never could figure out how I slipped up on that one. Anyway, that was yesterday. It's tomorrow that counts, right? No, 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 just think about it. Just think about it, honey. The Barbary Coast. Your name up on top of them billboards again. Maybe even Nob Hill. And it, maybe we could even get married, huh? Now, isn't that sweet? A proposal. Right here in the middle of 3,000 cows. Little violin music and a mixed choir and the setting would be complete. Honey, maybe I didn't make myself clear. Like a window, honey. This is Georgia, remember? The bright-eyed idiot you dumped when you took off with those plates. But I only ran away because of you. Look, all I needed was the right kind of a setup, and I knew I'd never make it with Stryker around. I mean, I was going to send for you. I swear I was. Oh, sure you were. That's why it took Cole and me four months to run you down. Oh, Georgia. Save your breath, burying man. You're going to need it for the services. Services? I might even send you flowers for old times' sake. feed a sick rabbit. You're lucky to be getting anything at all after all I've been through. That black-suited little Jasper trying to run me down and all you think about is your bellies. Now, wait a minute, Wishbone. That was a pure D accident. Mr. Tolliver's team just run off with him, that's all. More likely he was trying to run me down for business for that black box of his. Now, what's that for? Oh, well, well Mr. Tolliver don't feel too good. Oh, move along. There's others. Now, how much do you think you'd like to have? Next man. I thought you said you saw him heading this way. I did. Maybe he's in the hearse. Oh, I, I thought you were somebody else. Here you go, Mr. Teller. Put something in your gullet and settle your nerves. I, I, I just, just lost my appetite. Oh, now, that's all right. And once we get to town, you feel a lot better. Sure, Mr. Tolliver. Nothing like a little game of poker to take the edge off a of man's upsets. You bet. Come on, now, eat. Mr. Tolliver. That was a close call you had out there today. Maybe you ought to be a little more careful from now on, huh? Something like that could get you killed. S something spooked my horses. Hmm, yeah. That's what I heard. 
Jensen. Ah, oh, now you cheer up, Mr. Tolliver, and don't give it another thought. He just wanted to be neighborly. Neighborly? If you boys knew what that man really wanted. Uh, wanted. Excuse me, Jess. Wondering when you were going to favor us with a visit again? You have a nice little scout? Well, now you know what they say about haste making waste. I took a 30-mile swing, and it really paid off. There's good water and graze. From here to Castle Peak, everything is just great. Yeah, well, not everything. Take a look. Cheyenne. Oh, how long have they been up there? Ten yeah, minutes is too long as far as I'm concerned. Well, why don't we run them off? It's a great country. As long as they're doing nothing but looking, we ain't gonna do anything but let them. Why, they're sure interested in something down here. Maybe, maybe they're just interested in picking up a few strays. In any case, you get a fresh horse from the Bermuda and try and find out some of the answers without starting a ruckus. Miss Dollar, we're going to be pulling out of here in a little bit now. You all right? Oh, yeah, fine, fine. Yeah, uh, don't worry about me. I'm, um, uh, I'm looking for some medicine. <laughs> Trying to, uh, you know, uh, fix my upset stomach. <laughs> I'll find it. Uh, can't play poker, gents, can we, on an upset stomach? <laughs> And a whole lot more. I want everybody out in that herd and keep your eyes open. Hey! You two right and drag on that box? No. I am the tinker, the best that there be. I roam over hills. And I sing merrily, sing a link yatam, la tia, yatam, in the land and tinker, I, la catalog? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Wishbone. I was thinking of buying myself a new little hoster. Well, you better think about ordering yourself a new pair of boots, because you got your feet in the fire, you idiot.
Well, we can turn west of the Rock City cutoff. That'll get us out of Cheyenne country faster. Yeah, and add another day to the drive. Mr. Paper, may I see you for a minute? Hmm? I'd like to talk to you uh, privately. Is private enough? <clears throat> I think that you gents should, uh, should see this. I uh, found it in my belongings a few minutes ago. I collect him. It uh, helps identify customers sometimes. I thought his name had a familiar ring to it, sir. Yeah, one for murder, robbery, fraud, blackmail, swindle. Everything but the payroll. <laughs> well, what are you showing it to us for? Well, uh, aren't you going to arrest him or something? Arrest him? My only job is to get 3,000 beeves to a buyer as quickest and easiest way possible. He don't include wearing a star. But, but, but he's a crook. Well, then, you tell the sheriff when you get to Rock City, huh? Yes, but... Uh, <laughs> Look, Mr. Tolliver, I'll try to make it plain. What with worrying about 3,000 cows, Cheyennes, a couple of dozen odd, very odd assorted drovers uh, with bad dispositions, I am not about to take on any more troubles. Is that clear enough? <laughs> but there's $5,000 reward. Well, then, you collect it after you leave the herd. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it away. Five thousand dollars. You thinking of uh, becoming a bounty hunter? Hey, who is this? It comes off. Ain't even dry yet. Hmm. Well, well, well. You've got an interesting sideline for a burying man. Could uh, I interest both of you gents in little proposition? There's a gun on your back, Mr. Favor. No, no. Hey, what's going on? That's far enough, Cookie. Cookie? Did you say something? It's too bad, Favor. I was going to keep this private between Polk and me. Drop the gun belts. Now move away from the wagon. Tolliver and I got a little business to settle. Come on out of there. Right, 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 right. There are plates here someplace, I've been it. Oak's kind of versatile, isn't he? Uh, he prints all sorts of things. Phony stock certificates, phony bills. Whatever he happens to need. Or whatever you happen to need? Mm hmm That's the way it used to be. Just the three of us. Oak printed them, I passed them. And Georgia? Well, she just came along to help us spend the profits. Mr. Bernard! <laughs> Get us up on never make the head of the class. <laughs> You just come right out of there. Gladly. Gladly. <laughs>
Hey, he got loose. You better take another look. Looks like they turned him loose. The Cheyenne Nation's on those hills. They want us or they want the herd? They want the one with the stovepipe hat. Uh, uh, me? You. Maybe you'd better start all over again. Well, apparently they've been tracking you ever since you picked him up. Now, this is kind of crazy, but uh, your old chief is dying and they want to give him a special honor or something. Oh, that's his son up there running things. Well, what's that got to do with Tolliver? Well, they want him in his burying wagon to give the chief a white man's funeral. What? I'm only telling you what they told me. All he has to do is carry the chief out of the burying grounds in that thing there and there won't be any trouble. And if he don't? Well, if we don't send him up there, they're going to come down here and take him and the herd and everybody else here. Uh, where do you think you're going? Excuse me, just a moment, please. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Now, uh, I'm not exactly a burying man, but, um, uh, did I understand this gentleman to say that there would be no violence, either before the funeral or after, in the event that I was available, I mean? Well? Well, now, sir, I'm not too, uh, fond of this type of service, but under the circumstances, I would be willing to sacrifice my own safety to see that the rest of you were secured from... Uh, Absolute destruction. Uh, if you wouldn't mind pointing that thing in the other direction, uh, please. Very generous of you, Mr. Tolliver. Yeah, well, we better do something. They ain't gonna sit up there all day, you know. All right, Tolliver. Get on with the burying. Oh, one thing. Yes. You ever let me see that face of yours again, I will break off both of your arms, pound you into the ground, right up to that stovepipe hat. Like I said, Mr. Faber, you are a true Galahad of the open plains. <laughs> Georgia, honey, if you ever get to San Francisco, look me up. And call a look on the bright side. They tell me the food in these Western penal institutions is wonderful. Oh, Tolliver. Yeah? One last thing, the plates. Uh, the, the plates? The plates. Oh, you did the plates, of course, of course. I was uh, <clears throat> just uh, keeping them uh, safe. For... Yeah, sure. Now, you'd better get that box rolling before I bend these over your head. Uh, yeah, right away, sir, right away. Uh, that Indian will get a first-class burial, sir. You won't have to worry about a thing. I'm going right to the top of that hill. I'm going <laughs> Uh, excuse me, sir, but, uh, did they happen to mention anything about, uh, paying for the services? Did, did, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Quince, Scarlett, take those two into the sheriff's office of Rock City. Right, you'll go with him. Oh, Deliver really? these. Really? And make sure none of Tolliver's poker money is spent. Well, I know it. Just too good to be true. Well, let's get cracking. We got a day to make up. After you, teacher. Right, boy, let me look. Hey, Mr. Wishbone. What? What do you call that Indian money? Wampum. Anybody knows that. I bet that Mr. Tolliver sure gets a lot of counterfeit wampum circulating around here for too long. Get up there and finish loading that wagon. You're not hurt. Now get going. Wampum. Who ever heard of counterfeit wampum? <laughs>
Just how long have you been having these dizzy spells, Mr. Maxton? Oh, about six months, maybe longer. Uh-huh. Recurrent pain behind the eyes, impairment of peripheral vision, and uh, dizzy spells, huh? <laughs> Doc, you'll either have to spell it out or aim me to the nearest dictionary. I'm afraid there isn't much doubt, Mr. Maxton. Glaucoma, disease of the eye, characterized by the hardening of the eyeball and gradual loss of sight. How much longer? Well, with the right care and as much rest as possible, maybe a year or two. Yeah. Of course, I could be wrong. They're specialists back east. Thanks, Doc. How much do I owe you? Oh, no, 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 no. There's, there's no charge. Oh, I pay my own way. Thanks. Just leave him. Beyond the sun over the mountain, there are long arms waiting for me. Why, Gil Favor! Now you're the last Texas Jack I expected to bump into. Mr. Maxson, it's been a long time. Oh, come on with that, mister. You're your own trail boss now. You look fine, Gil. Same for you. How's it going? Oh, still got those San Antonio stock owners standing in line, just like the old days. <sighs> like the old days. How about a drink? Oh, I'm supposed to pick up my rammer. Well, he seems to have himself pretty well tied up. <laughs> Ever know of a ramrod who wasn't? <laughs> Come on. Bartender. Two. Make it your best. Wow. I can still remember your first time out. Lanky, wet behind the ears, a real salty kid. <laughs> and how about those three strays you lost? Just one day had a jump off. Uh, that I'd just soon forget. Oh, no, 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 this is on me. On one condition. You forget about those strays. <laughs> Ate you out, didn't I? Oh, and then some. Oh, good luck. Bad memory. You moving herd? A couple miles east. We're heading for Wyoming. Oh, I just come back from up there myself. Huh? I trailed up a stock of herd, 1,800 head. Were well, you taking the long way back? Why not? There's no hurry. It's too late in the season to sign up another herd. I've got nothing but time on my hand. I know how that is. Yeah, men like you and me, we're uh, not much used to ourselves unless we're pushing beeves, are we? Oh, not much, I'm afraid. No, thanks. Say, Harry, I just thought of something. What? Would you be interested in uh, trailing herd up north? With my outfit. Of course, it would only be right and drag, but I need an extra hand. Really, you'd be doing me a favor. Well, if you put it that way, Gil, I, I don't see how I can refuse. Hey, boss. Come here. Hey, I, I want you to meet uh, Linda Lou here. Yeah. Say, uh, boss, I... Yeah, I know. You're in love again. No. 
Linda Lou, Roddy Yates is Harry Maxton. How do you do? You'll be riding drag with us starting tomorrow. Hey, you got your gear with you? Pack and waiting. Well, let's go. Linda? Harry Maxton. What's the matter, honey? Is something wrong? Something wrong, Mr. Wishbone? Is ever anything right with you? You've done it again. Done what, Mr. Wishbone? I asked for salt, didn't I? Yes, sir. And salt is spelled with an S. And pepper is spelled with a what? A P, I guess. A P, you guess. What does that say? P, Mr. Wishbone. So? Salt, see? Well, I handed you the wrong shaker so many times, Mr. Wishbone. I thought I'd change them around. That way there won't be so many mistakes. Just trying to be a good old helper. Well, you've helped enough. Now, go on and get out of here. Where? I don't care where. Just go and count to a hundred. Slow. Now, get going. Yes, sir. One. Two. Three. Four. Lynch. Hey, wishbone. Mr. Favor, you can see I'm busy. I haven't got time. You remember this fella? Mr. Maxton, are you a sight for sore eyes? And you're a sight for an empty stomach. Well, now, there's a trail boss appreciates me. Now, you're gonna stay for supper, and I won't take no for an answer. You're staying with us all the way to Denver, Wish. That was Mr. Favor's idea. Delivered my herd early and was riding along, minding my own business, when who do I bump into? Yeah, I asked him to sign up with his wish. Well, you know, like I said to Roddy last night, how bad we need an extra hand? Yeah, we do. Fortunately, he was in between, had some time on his hands, so... Well, trust the boss to pick up a real bargain when he sees it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I gotta get back to my cooking. Oh, Harry, here's some of the boys. This is Harry Maxton. Some of you may know him. Clay Forrester, Jim Quince, Joe Scarlett, and Frank Slade. We don't need no introduction, do we, Mr. Maxton? It's been a real long time. Harry will be riding the rest of the way to Denver with us. He'll spell toothless on drag. Drag? Well, now, ain't that something? The great Harry Maxton eating dust. <laughs> but it sure is a funny world. Come and get it! Well, the biscuits ain't done yet, Mr. Wishbone. They're done enough. for town now, Mr. Maxson. Something wrong? No, I. I saw you rubbing your face with your hands. Just some dust in my eyes. surprise. 
Mushy. I got a hole in my stomach that just won't quit. Right now, even your stew looks good. Coffee, Mr. Maxton? Oh, darn it, with one. Mr. Maxton. Special service for Mr. Maxton? Oh, why don't you dry up? What are you bucking for, Wishbone? No trail boss anymore. It's just like the rest of us now. Wishbone, I'll try a little more of that coffee. One more minute, and all you would have gotten was an empty pot with a new dent in it. Mr. Maxton. <clears throat> so whatever happened to the famous Harry Maxton, uh, the trail boss with, with iron in his fists, granite in his guts. Get off my back. Leave him alone. He ain't causing no trouble. Not causing any trouble, huh? Well, he sure didn't mind handing it out, did you, Mr. Maxton? Twenty days out in the plains and you gave me my time. You cut me loose with a quart of water, broken down cow pony, and <laughs> a handful of hard day. Yeah, I had it coming. I let one stray get by me, one lousy stray. Now, I had it coming to me for that. All right, Maxton. You're down to dirt with the rest of us now. You got no crew to back you up, and you got no owners to make it stick. It's just you and me. Did you hear me, Maxton? It's just you. And me. That's enough. You men got a job to do, and that job ain't finished till we reach Denver. You got any problems, you can settle them then. All right, Maxton. I got time. Got all the time in the world. Who's that? Me, Mr. Maxton. Wishbone? Yeah, Mr. Maxton. What are you doing here? Well, I couldn't sleep either, so I just thought I'd join you. Hi. <laughs> Times, Mr. Maxton. <laughs> like old times, Wish. Yeah. Uh, the 
these young kids today? What do they know? Ah, oh, they're all right. Uh, they think they know everything. Just because they got a few years on us. They think they got the whole world in their hip pockets. Maybe they have. Maybe that's the uh, part of being on the short side of 30. The best part. Yeah, it puts me in mind of the first time I saw St. Louis back in 47. Oh, I tried to take over that town with loud talk and a thirst that just wouldn't quit. Must have taken the better part of a month for my head to shrink back to size. <laughs> Same thing happened to me in San Antonio. Spent a week in a local castle, but it was worth it. You know, I really believed I had Texas by the short horns. Boys will wear off their edge wish, just like we did. Oh, I gotta keep this head away. I never can tell who'll get into my medical supplies. <laughs> medical supplies? Painkiller. Guaranteed to cure uh, snake bite, broken bones, and cold nights like this. I tell the boys it's cooking wine. All right, Wish. What is it? Oh, what's what? You're not passing around your cooking wine unless you want something special. Well, you just take care of yourself, Mr. Maxton. I mean, with that fellow Slade. Now, he's mighty fast with that gun, and, well, you, you're... Wish, what do you got to say? Well, your reputation can't whip him, Mr. Maxton. And that's just about all you got left, your reputation. So, just don't you mix with him, you hear? I hear. Drink on it? Drink on it. For now. But when we hit Denver, the drinks are on me, right? Right. get past you, Harry. Just a slip, I guess. Nobody should know better than you how much a few slips like that can cost you. Won't happen again, Gail. Won't happen again. Well, that does it, Yates. Ain't bad enough having maxed him along now. Now he's got to be wet nursed. Now, you might put up with it, but I won't. Not for long. Straight, six eyes. Yeah, well, four tens beats it. Oh. <laughs> Those cards. Right. You 
feel kind of sorry for him, huh, Mr. Wishbone? Sorry? What in Hades are you talking about? I mean that old man. Old? Well, Mr. Maxson isn't much older than I am. Are you calling me old? Oh, I didn't mean that, Mr. Wishbone. What I meant, he's kind of old just to be droving. Well, there you go using that word again. What makes you think a man isn't any use just because he's put on a few years? Well, a man don't hardly hit his stride till he's mellowed out some. You don't think I learned this job overnight, do you? No, oh, sir, it took time and plenty of it. And the same goes for Mr. Maxton. Doesn't anybody need to feel sorry for Mr. Maxton? No, oh, sir. Anyway, he's just doing this to do Mr. Favor a good turn. Well, I heard that fellow Slade talking about him. Slade? Now, what's a sad lich like Slade know about the likes of Harry Maxton? There isn't a better boss on this trail or any other trail. Yes, sir. Anytime you want to know anything about anything, you come to me. We'll go around listening to Jasper's like Slade. Sure thing. You hear me? Sure thing. All right. Now, here, what are you standing around gabbing for? Sort those apricots and put them on the fire. <laughs> What's the matter with you guys? Is this a card game or a wake? Shut up and deal. Boy, what we need in this game is some new blood to liven it up. Hey, what about him? What's the matter with you, boy? Don't you know Mr. Maxson? He don't want to mix with plain drovers. But I was just asking... Toothless. Him. Yeah, I know. Deal the cards. Your bet. Deal me out of this one. Come on, sit in. Maybe we ought to have a little talk, huh? About Maxim? Ain't nothing to talk about. Things have been going real smooth up to now. Why ask for trouble? Ain't gonna be no trouble. Well, look, boss, it's a... Uh, it's a share of money. Men ain't gonna wanna split with no newcomer, especially one like Maxton. You tell them not to worry about their money. I'm taking care of Maxton's end. Well, all right, then, forget, forget the money. It's, uh, Maxton just spells trouble, that's all. Look at, look at the way the men are now. Look at Slade, he's got a chip on his shoulder as big as he is. Slade, that boy, he got a lot to learn. Well, ask anyone, ask anyone who's worked for Maxton. Maxton knows this business. Being a trail boss ain't running no maypole dance. It's a job to do no matter what. Uh, sure, Maxson's on right. Sure, he's tough. More than that. And he's not the kind to give any quarter, but he never asked for none, either. I know, I worked for him. Well, that was a long time ago, though. He's the same man. He's not the same man. Last time out, he lost half his herd, and the time before that, uh, most of his men walked off on him. Every man in every cow town along this trail knows that Maxson's through, he's finished. He won't even touch him, and now when he comes begging to you, you take him on. He didn't beg, I asked him. Why? We don't need an extra man, not on drag or anywhere else. Maxton will hold up his end. It's a long day tomorrow. You better... I know. Better get some sleep. We detour 60 miles east. How far is the nearest water? Two days, I hope. Uh, Beeves ain't gonna be too happy. And don't give him time to think about it. Keep prodding those lead steers till sundown. Right. All right, Clay, go find that water at the end of the rainbow. Well, let's hope it's still there.
Sorry, Mr. Maxton. I didn't see it. It's too bad Favor wasn't here. Well, he could have helped you up. Old man. Slade. Strap on your gun belt. Let's get this done. Christmas come early this year. Mr. Maxton, don't do it. Don't let him push you. It's not the boss. It's a broken down old cook. Won't belong before there's nobody left to hide behind. It's suicide. He isn't worth it. Neither is life. Has to be the way he says. Now stand back, Wish. You heard the man, now back off. Mr. Maxton, you... Wish! Back off. Has to be this way. All right, Slade. You always talk to fast gun. Let's see how fast. Right in the belt buckle. Well, that's where the first one's going. I've got to save the second one till I hear you begging. Loud and clear. Sounds like you, Slade. Big man when you're on the top. An empty bucket when you have to root and scratch. That's what's eating you, isn't it? I called you down in front of the men and showed them you had no bone in that back of yours. You ain't carrying around that load of hate because I fired you. But because I proved you're nothing at all. Just a little runny-nosed kid trying to bluff his way through a man's world. Draw, Paxton. After you, Slade. After you. Well, break it up. Stay out of this favor. And I said break it up, boy. This ain't done yet. It isn't until this drive is over. Now, you've got a choice. You keep that gun put away, or you get out of here right now. Well? It'll keep. Eastways for the time being. All right, break it up, all of you. Wait a minute, Harry. Now, you know better. The Slade started it. Mr. Maxson shut all he could. I don't care who started it. I want it finished now. Clear? Clear. Give everybody on strict water rations the next two days. You already told me. So I'm telling you again. All right. Uh, Mr. Fayer, there's something you ought to know about Mr. Maxson. What? Well, he didn't start that ruckus with Slade. Come on, Wish. That's all. But I'm a growing boy! Well, then stop growing! Oh, Quince, you'll be right in night, Herd. Well, I was on last night. Yeah, so? 
Where's where's Maxton? Uh, he was here a little bit ago. I'll go find no, him. No, 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 man, I'll find him. Harry. Harry, I can't let it ride anymore. Right. I'm waiting for you to come to me, but I can't wait any longer. There's too much at stake. Oh, Gil, I didn't know what it was before. I know now. It's your eyes. They bothered me today. The dust, that's all. Harry. All right, so it's my eyes, but they're not so bad. And... Well, look, you get a little older, things change a little. Well, maybe I could use a pair of specs, but that doesn't How mean... How bad is it? I got a year, maybe two. But Gil, I still got time. I could still be useful. It's a long, hard drive ahead. It's going to be tough enough for those who are able to handle it. I can still do a job. I got a responsibility to the crew as well as the owners. You know that better than anyone. Well, just let me stay on till we make Denver. Any job. Let me prove to you what I have to prove to myself. I remember rightly, you got a son in St. Louis. It ain't no shame to it, Harry. Everybody needs help one way or another. And you help me. Let's face it, we all come to the end of the trail sometime. Oh, I'm not fighting that, Gil. It's just that I can't go down like a bow-backed plow horse put to pasture or a, an old man with a crooked back and a hat full of memories that, that don't matter to anyone. Thirty years matters, Harry. It matters to a lot of people. It's what matters to me. Gil, I told you I can't quit now. I can still be useful. Harry, listen. No, you listen. Put yourself in my shoes. You just think how willing you would be to walk away from all this. The only real meaning to your life. You told me to be honest with you before. All right, Gil? Now you be honest with me and to yourself. All I'm asking is to let me ride out the rest of this drive. All right, Harry. Best I can do is let you work the remuda with Jesus. I won't let you down. Gil. Uh, the others, do they have to know? I mean about the eyes. Hmm? Oh, pity don't go down very easy. Oh, it isn't that I can't handle the remuda. Know what I mean, Gil? Yeah, I know what you mean.
two days, a quarter rations. Unless we have a rain. Rain? Some chance. Quarter rations, then. Right. Well, at least we only lost five head in that poison water. That's lucky. Yeah, real lucky. Well, there's water here to the west, beyond uh, Eagle Pass. Yeah, well, our luck by the time we get there, it'd be dry out. No, no, it's spring fed, according to the mark. How far you figure from here? Mm, two days if we push day and night. We'll never make it. Those bees will be dropping like flies. There's water nearer. To the east, a good stream. Where? The foot of Calvert Range. You start out for that stream and you'll reach it before sun or tomorrow. Yeah, well, uh, will you show me on this map where that uh, stream is, Max? I mean, please show me. It's not marked on the map, I guess. Oh, you guess. It's there. I covered every square foot of this country. You say. That's right, he says. He knows this country blind. Hold it. Calvert Rain. You sure? I'm telling you. Oh, now, listen, boss. We're you... driving east, then. Get him up. Start riding. I want to report on that stream as fast as possible. There is a stream. I think you ought to quit until you tell Mr. Favor. Yeah, you just go right on thinking, because nothing's going to change my mind. What's going on here? He's quitting, Mr. Roddy. Quit? Well, we need every man we got. You know the fix we're in, Slade. You can't quit. Look, I, I told the others, and I'm telling you. Now, Favor's crazy for listening to Max, isn't it? That old man, he's leading his herd right up a blind alley. Look, Max, it might be a lot of things, but he's cattleman all the way. He ain't going to dry out a herd. That's what you say. But I know him. I say he's trying to kill every one of us, cows included. Well, I want no part of it. Yeah. Keep what I got coming. What you got coming, I couldn't keep. Maxim was right. You're yellow from the ground up. Hey, no, look, Maybe I... you'd like to make me eat those words, huh? Maybe you'd like to draw that gun on me, show me what a big man you are? Just remember one thing, Slade. I ain't an old man. Come on, what are you waiting on? Part of it. Just one out. And get out. Now let's get going. We got a herd to keep moving. Certain? Not a sign of a stream. You searched the area good? I searched all of it. What do you think took me so long? Turn the herd in, keep them that way. You help me. Yeah. Fish? Where's Maxton? He's gone. Gone? That's right. He said Clay was wrong. Wrong? That's right. He said he didn't go far enough. He took an empty canteen, went up there, said he's going to fill it with water from that stream. Well, Mr. Fravor, he can't find his way up there, even with the best of eyes. Uh, tell Roddy to hold the herd here till I get back.
Gil. I'm all right. I lost my horse. I've got him. Take it easy. We'll be riding back. Now, wait, wait, wait. Come on. Wait. Don't wait. 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 <laughs> Where, Harry? You can see it, can't you? Yeah, Harry. I can see it all right. <laughs> Stand like I said. Like you said, Harry. Good luck to you, Mr. Maxson. Hello, fellas. Oh, Mr. So long, sir. So long. Bye. Oh, Harry, you know you're still welcome to ride to Denver with us. It's going to be kind of hard to get a good man out here. I got an idea you're going to do fine, Rowdy. Real fine. No, Gil. I reached the end of the trail. I mean... I reached the end of this trail for me. I got what I wanted. It'll do. Where will you be heading, Mr. Maxton? Oh, first to Center City and then the stage to St. Louis. Been a long time since I've seen my son. You take care of yourself, Wishbone? Sure, Mr. Maxton. Rowdy? It's been like old times, Gil. Like old times, Harry. Somebody ought to go along with him, at least as far as Center City. Not with Harry Maxton. Now he'll make it the rest of the way, now that he knows where he's going. Yeah, well, yeah. that may be, but we might have some mail in Center City. I was thinking maybe I'd ride on in there. You know, I'm more worried about you getting lost. Well, I wouldn't get lost if I was riding along with Mr. Maxton, though. True. All right, get going. I'll get my horse. Thank you. 